Now let us look at another modality by which you can do localization without GPS and these are typical of what uh, you can do with uh, IoT kind of sensors ok. I will give you a nice motivating example and after that let us see how you can we can build this application. Imagine a situation where um, there is a, a let us say a vaccine which has to be um, transported from point A to point B there is a vaccine ok and this vaccine is obviously you have to store it properly you have to keep it under proper temperature conditions and ambient conditions also have to be maintained properly and perhaps this vaccine should not uh, take a route which is uh, full of uh, it is very bumpy and very dusty and so on and between point A and point B you can have multiple paths ok and now you have told the truck driver or the car driver who is carrying this vaccine that uh, you should take this route and no other route ok uh, to reach from A to B. The reason why you have fixed this route is because you know for sure that if he takes that route the vaccine will maintain its uh, potency uh, and, uh, and it will be useful when it is being administered right. So, that is the requirement it could be vaccine it could be anything just giving you an example. The so you what you do you make it into a small package put the vaccine inside and then you put some sensor there put some sensor there and then you know sort of load it into the uh, vehicle and the vehicle starts to move. And at point B you should have a very simple way perhaps very very simple way of finding out whether the truck driver or taxi driver took the route that you have specified ok. This is very very important and let us make a very harsh assumption from point A to point B is a route which is a lot of uh, tree cover ok. So, there is no way by which you can actually depend on um, trying to use GPS in this kind of applications because of uh, uh, the uh, fact that uh, the route may also pass through several tunnels and all that because just has to maintain that optimal path. Now um, question is how what kind of IOT solution can you think of for this kind of motivating example. One thing uh, look at even mobile phone sensors barometer is something that is quite uh, common in most high end phones. Nexus has barometer and uh, also other sense other phones have uh, these sensors and it is very easy from simple physics that pressure is highest at the sea level and as you go up the pressure reduces and uh, because binding of these molecules is uh, sort of uh, loosened right and therefore pressure is very very low and uh, is low and it continues to go lower and lower as you go higher and higher. And uh, there are very simple expressions by which one can compute um, this pressure that is uh, at different heights. For example, uh, pressure in itself can be expressed in several ways and people use different uh, units for expressing it. Uh, some people put it in terms of pounds per square inch some uh, set of uh, people use uh, kilopascals right and so on. So, let us take some standard way and fix that as a notation before we move on by simple actually you can use any simple calculator to find out what is the uh, pressure at sea level. If you do a compute you find that it is 101.3325 uh, kilopascal at sea level and any number uh, has o has only be got to be lower than this right. So, as you go up plane for instance when it goes to 30,000 feet and all that pressure is outside pressure is very very low and therefore, they have uh, uh, all kinds of cabin pressurizing systems to keep the pressure uh, equivalent of uh, 8,000 feet and 10,000 feet equivalent inside the uh, cabin. So, and that means a lot of uh, equipment. Uh, to keep the humans 
uh, you know properly breathing and ensure that uh, the air quality is good and so on. So, that is another problem, but just tell you that outside pressures are low. Now, it is easy to see that uh, a simple IoT solution means that you essentially do a pressure based profiling. Okay. Now, if you have a simple pressure uh, sensor, you do a pressure based profiling and convert that pressure based profiling to elevation right and then you now have a elevation profile. Now, you go back and look at um, Google maps or any map related information even GPS for that matter. What will GPS give you? It will give you the lat latitude, long longitude, it will give you the elevation as well right. It will give you time and so many other related parameters. So, elevation is available in even from a map. Now, the you are fixing from A to B based on a certain map information that you have okay, and that is fixed you do not need any access to any GPS satellites or anything because the map is already a one time activity it is already done it is available to you. Now, what you have to do at the receiver at point B you have to take the data that is collected from this pressure which is now converted to elevation that elevation data is one time series. This map related information that you have collected from the maps is another time series okay. time series or you can say it is a set of points right. Time series will come if you know the speed at which the vehicle is moving and all that, um, but you can also you, you can obviously calculate the speed at which the vehicle is moving. So, you can actually call it another time series. So, you have one time series which is coming from the map I call this the root information ground truth information available to you and you have the pressure based information which is now converted to elevation information another time series okay. and uh, use these two time series somehow match them map them align them and then arrive at the point where you can decide that the vehicle chose the right route okay. out of the given n number of routes from point A to point B it chose that route which was prefixed which was perhaps the most optimal for carrying that vaccine and it is indeed the route of interest. Okay. So, this is one thing this is not a it is not that uh, you can do alignment very easily you need some simple tools like uh, dynamic programming tools like uh, uh, you know tools like uh, dynamic time warping which is a very simple algorithm you can use that and then um, align these uh, do time series and then arrive at a decision whether the person took the right route. Okay. So, this is what the gist of the problem is uh, and this is what we want to actually show you the exercise that we did in the lab uh, as part of this course. Let me point you to this um, result here okay. essentially you are talking about 101.325 kilo Pascal at, at sea level. Okay. And if you use a simple calculator you will see that at 2000 meters the pressure is about 80 kilo Pascal. I mentioned to you any pressure that you measure has only got to be lower than this value it cannot be higher because this is the highest at sea level. And then what you do you convert this uh, pressure uh, into elevation and you just see how it looks. On the bottom picture what you see here this is elevation data you can see that it is going up like this and coming down and as it goes up um, in elevation the pressure has to decrease and therefore, you can see that this is pressure based information okay. and this is matching right uh, as you go up and uh, higher and higher the pressure is actually dropping. So, this is something that you can easily conduct. Uh, with the mobile phone that you have or any other pressure sensor that you have 
use the existing map data okay, of your area and you can profile it. Elevation to pressure, let us look at the specific example for instance. Here again you have elevation and you have the uh, elevation measured from pressure this is the key. Okay. This is ground truth, this is ground truth, this is not really ground truth, but this is the actual data that you get from your sensors and this is another time series essentially. right? So, anything that you see with respect to root based elevation means that this is ground truth, this is from map and the good thing is both of them look almost identical there is a lot of noise here because sensors as we mentioned earlier are very noisy you have to denoise you have to do normalization and all of that before you actually start using. So, a lot of I would say pre processing steps have to be done before you start uh, doing any sort of uh, time series alignments right. So, this is uh, these are all pre processing steps. So, essentially it is coming down to that you do little bit of pre processing you do reducing and uh, normalization normalizing uh, very very simple expressions can be used. What is this reducing that is the question right which may be bothering you um, see uh, if you put a pressure sensor and you say I want one sample every millisecond or every 10 millisecond you end up with humongous amount of data that perhaps is difficult to process with any dynamic programming tools. So, what you do is you find a way of trying to prune the data that you have collected and extract very important uh, sections in the time series for the purposes of time warping. Okay. So, you can see this is one part so that is reducing normalizing the data is important because you get uh, data from two different uh, completely two different uh, ways by which you have collected data one is from the map related and the other is actually from a sensor related. So, everything has to be normalized so that you can actually do the proper uh, alignments right. So, this is important. So, the very simple expression here which will allow you to uh, do a normalization. So, now you see estimated elevation data reduction um, original data and reduced dimension data you can see that uh, you have taken away several samples out of it. So, that it is easy now for us to do a uh, time warping with the reference data on the x axis is data vector length and on the y axis is the um, elevation and um, here the same you can see that this is from the uh, ground truth which is essentially the uh, routed uh, elevation data uh, reduction and uh, reduced data dimension and the original data both are shown. It is obvious that uh, original data is much more sharper has lot more points as compared to the reduced uh, dimension data, but that we can live with that right because you are trying to get hold of uh, very important key features. It is also important at this stage to note that um, what is it at what scale at what accuracy you are trying to no, uh, you are trying to get to localization right. Here it is not like the IMU system where sub 1 meter accuracy may be required if you are doing an indoor localization right like examples like fire detection and all you are using a mobile phone using IMUs a staircase which can be used for coming out of a, out of the building. Um, if it is uh, if your localization accuracy is less than a meter you may actually miss the staircase right. Indoor even 1 meter is a lot uh, whereas, outdoor 1 meter may not make much of a uh, impact. So, this application is not really talking about sub 1 meter and all that it is just trying to come to a gross scale yet it should be able to do the job of trying to profile the exact route taken from point A to point B. Okay. So, you have to note that uh, these are applications of that nature. Okay. Now, we go on 
and pull out those important parts of this uh, time series um, which is uh, dividing this whole thing into sections. So, you visually pick some points on the plots from the two graphs um, uh, wherever uh, they may coincide with each, uh, each, uh, with each other and then you use the dynamic programming technique to actually populate the distance matrix. Okay. So, again you can see that this is ground truth what is shown here because this is the rooted uh, elevation root based elevation and this is the estimated elevation from the sensor uh, data right. So, you can see the y axis is elevation and here also is the elevation because one is ground truth and the other is sensor based. At the end you use the DTW technique and then you populate that matrix matrix. So, I would say first step is distance matrix matrix and uh, which uses the dynamic programming technique dynamic programming programming technique which is essentially DTW dynamic time warping you get to the distance matrix and then you come to the optimal path the best alignment when you say optimal path this is the best alignment okay this appears to be the best uh, alignment and you can see that this is the estimated elevation and this is indeed the uh, rooted elevation please note this is ground truth data points and this is the data points from the sensors from the pressure sensor from pressure we have con converted it into elevation and the y axis is essentially the uh, sensor based output and the x axis you see indeed is the ground truth based data. In dynamic programming one can call this time series as B and uh, the x axis you could call as A time series A and time series B and then you get to the best alignment of the uh, uh, two time series uh, which is essentially the optimal path. It also shows that the white color resembles the low cost uh, points and the dark color this is a visual representation. So, it is very good for us to understand it good dark color resembles high cost points. So, this is the right alignment of the two time series after you do this alignment pick those points that you got from the alignment and convert it back into the uh, root based uh, elevation and the pressure based elevation. You can see again that now you are talking about elevation and you have two of these which is one with respect to um, the ground truth and the other is with respect to the pressure based sensor and you can see that uh, the root based is shown this way and uh, the pressure based is shown this way you take some points here and then you see that it has indeed uh, warped you do an overlay of the two warped vectors which essentially lead to very accurate uh, identification of the fact that the vehicle indeed took the right path the right route from point A to point B. Let us look at a very simple um, dynamic uh, programming uh, exercise the very simple one in fact this exercise I found somewhere on the web and I thought I should uh, show you how this uh, simple technique uh, is a very powerful way of alignment of two uh, time sequences. Let us say the first time series sequence is A which is shown here and uh, the second time series sequence is B which is shown here. Now, the points of this time series is this part okay. this one that I have 
in the elliptical form that you see here uh, these are all the points related to the time series of A. Similarly, the points data points of B is the other thing that is sort of in an elliptical form shown here. Now, your objective is starting with this square okay, starting with this square you have to populate till the last square okay, you have to populate. If you populate that you will do a first step which is called the distance matrix. You will actually get to the uh, distance matrix, you, you will calculate the distance matrix. Okay. So, this is the first step then is to find the optimal path. I have not shown you the optimal path in this because I want to just hammer on the first part which is essentially the distance matrix. Uh, population population of this matrix. To do population of this matrix I have taken one example here let us say you are interested in populating this particular cell. This cell has value 20 okay. this value 20 you have to critically note is computed using this expression this is the mother of all expressions this expression that you see here is the mother of all expressions. The, so, nothing else matters this this expression is what is required for populating it. Okay. It says take the mod of a i minus b j plus take the minimum of three things first thing second thing and the third thing. What are these three things? These three things are nothing but three previously computed values three previously computed values. Take this 20 what is pre three previously computed values for this nothing there is only in one this is the only one that is previously computed. This is not you cannot use this because this is part of the time series uh, data points that you have put here right. So, this is only one that is previously computed apply this expression how you got 20 you did a i minus b j what is a i is 8 b j is 1. So, you did 8 minus 1 you take an absolute value and then what was the previous computation? Previous computation for this cell is only 1 here which is 13. So, you just take 13 if you had 3 others you would have to take minimum of the 3, but in this case you had only uh, you have only 1. So, you take 13 here. Supposing you are interested in this cell now if you are trying to look at this cell then what are its previous uh, calculations computations this is a previous one and uh, this is a previous one right and this is also a previous one all the 3 exist for this. Now, apply the same logic to get to this um, filling up this cell it is a i minus b j this is 9 here you want to fill up this cell. So, you have to use a i which is 9 and uh, b j which is 3. So, you got this already straight away plus minimum of 3 things what are the minimum of 3 things 5 5 and 11 and therefore, minimum is 5. So, you do 9 minus 3 plus 5 which is essentially 11 and you then populate this cell with 11. How will you compute this cell? How will you populate this cell? You can populate this cell based on previous computations as I mentioned to you. Previous computation is only in this case only 1 which is this 8 right. Uh, and this you cannot use obviously, because this is really the part of the time series. So, is, is you have to start your uh, matrix actually is this border right. So, this is very important often you get confused. So, I am just re emphasizing this that this is indeed your border you have to populate uh, from here onwards right you have to populate this up to this end point here. So, I will let me draw another line so that you have to populate till here. So, these parts are what you have to populate. So, let us try um, you want to populate this again I'll apply the same expression 
this uh, dynamic programming uh, expression which is uh, a i minus b j. So, in this case it is uh, a i is uh, 1 b j is 0. So, 1 minus 0 is 1 and its previous computation is just one number here which is 8. So, 1 plus uh, 8 is 9 and then you put 9 here. Okay. So, you could try populating this complete table using this one mother expression and then you will come up with a nice completion of the distance matrix. Now, obviously, this is only one part as I mentioned to you. What is important is to compute the best alignment. So, after you have uh, finished the uh, distance matrix, you have to come to the second step which is the optimal path I is nothing but the best alignment. I will write it down here and call it best alignment. Okay. It is easy for you if you start from either this corner, some of the time series you will start from here and uh, sometimes people start from here. You could start looking up the path from this point to this point and take the minimum values as this comes down okay, as you go along. Then you will find that you will go in one direction, then you will perhaps go like this, then you will go down, then you may come like this and then go down like this and come to this last square here. And that is indeed the best alignment of this two time series A and B. This is left to the student to actually try out and get to the um, optimal path or the best alignment of these two uh, time series. This is how a dynamic time warping actually works um, is quite powerful in several domains and um, so we will see how this technique could be applied in different uh, application domains. Thank you very much.